folks, and welcome to what should be Hi-Fi News, etc., but isn't. And the reason it isn't is because um, Hi-Fi News, etc., is going to take a week off. Is because that I've had a bit of an experience. <laughs> I wanted to talk about that. And I wanted it to serve as a bit of a warning to you to not make the same mistakes I've made, and also to present you with a few warning signposts, you might say. So let's get to that now. Now, no one likes to admit that they've been scammed, but it still happens, and people are, and I have just been. This is an off-topic topic, you might say. Now, I've never gone off topic on this channel before, but I'm treating this as a special case for two specific reasons. Firstly, in general, across the globe, money is pretty tight right now, especially as I make this video in 2022. We're all being careful with our cash, and if we do make a purchase, we want to know it's the right one, and we're getting full value from that purchase. Secondly, as I make this video, we're halfway through November. Goodness, time flies. You know my head is still in April. Anyway, Christmas is around the corner as I speak. Presents are being bought and savings are being used to do just that. The very last thing you want to do is for those savings to, in effect, be stolen. The subject of this cautionary tale is the DVD disc. And okay, yes, if we're talking about hi-fi news, etc., there is a tenuous hi-fi link here. It's a silver disc. There's often music on it. It's often used as part of an AV system. And yes, hi-fi is involved in that. So, yeah, kind of. So what's the problem? The problem is counterfeit DVD products. Now, before I move on, I want to thank my fellow YouTube creator, a gentleman by the name of Heath Holland, who runs a rather wonderful channel called Serial at Midnight, devoted to physical media. On that channel, you see some coverage of vinyl, CD, comics, and books, but the main focus is film and TV over DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K. Now, Heath not only knows his stuff, but he's passionate and articulate, as well as highly entertaining. For this video, Heath kindly provided me with assistance. Check out the link for his channel in the description below if you'd like to see more. Now, I love film, golden age of Hollywood, musicals, noir, science fiction, exploitation cinema, and more. I also have a love of vintage TV, and it's the latter I'm going to focus on here. I had bought a few DVD-based box sets from eBay. They were all bought around the same time from two individual sources. Both were, and still are, individual sellers. They are not recognized retailers. Two of the box sets I bought were, and still are, Christmas presents, and one is an indulgence for myself. One of the presents is entitled New Heart, an 80s-era sitcom featuring that wonderful comedian Bob Newhart. Now, there's a complicated rights thing going on here. The first season is basically owned by 20th Century Fox, and the boutique label Shout Factory secured the rights for the other volumes, volumes 2 to 8. So, I received this collection because it's basically individual volumes collected by this particular source bound in shrink wrap. Now, what I wanted to do was to give you some sort of visual representation, a sort of A-B comparison of what I'm talking about here, just so you can see the issues involved. I could, normally I would, have bought a real box set, an actual real honest-to-goodness box set, and then I would have been able to compare the real box set with the fake box set. You could have seen yourself comparing the two together. but. Time is against me here. I experienced the issues, the scamming issues. Now, the video has to really happen right now, too, because of the run-up to Christmas. I want you to heed the warnings I'm giving you here so you can avoid buying fake goods. 
So I had to think of another way around this. I had to think of another solution. And I did with another box set also issued by the same label, Shout Factory. In this case, Barney Miller. This is a mid-70s TV cop show comedy, a quite brilliant comedy. Incidentally, if you want to learn about the social history of mid-70s New York, well, you probably get more information from this series than most books. It also has, I would say, the best theme tune of any comedy show or sitcom in history. But that's by the by. Now, the reason I also, or another reason I wanted to pick Barney Miller, in addition to coming from Shout Factory as well, the same label as Newhart, was both Newhart and Barney Miller did not have the benefit of remastering. There was some, well, some minor criticism when Barney Miller as a box set appeared on the market. It still had that 70s fuzzy analog smooth picture kind of look. There was no mastering, there was no focused definition in there, no enriched colors, etc. Just the original footage transferred onto DVD and that's your lot. Personally, I don't really mind because to me it has that vintage trad originality. I didn't really mind that at all. Now, in addition to that, the new harp box set similarly had some minor critique because there was no mastering applied. Again, it has that analog, smooth, fuzzy look about it, which again, I don't really see an issue with that. It can be quite endearing in a vintage traditional way. But the reason it's useful for this video is that the actual data used should be similar-ish. The look and the quality of the actual visuals are basically the same-ish, give or take. This is a half-hour comedy show, so the length of the episodes are basically the same, give or take a minute or three. In addition to that, New Heart squeezes, generally speaking, eight episodes on a disc. Barney Miller, around eight, nine, maybe, mainly nine. I haven't gone through every single disc, but the discs I looked at was eight New Heart, nine Barney Miller. So if I actually looked on a computer and looked at the size of the data files for each disc on an average level, they should be near enough the same, slightly more for Barney Miller because of that ninth extra one episode, but not that much more, if you see what I mean. So we can see here as a side by side, the boxes themselves. Well, you could say that New Heart's art looks a little bit smooth, maybe a little bit unfocused compared to the Barney Miller cover. There's not a great deal of difference here. And if we just glanced at the box itself, I don't think it would set off, as I say, many alarm bells. However, if you look at the actual discs inside here, Here's an example of one of the discs inside the Barney Miller box set. And you can see focused image of Barn himself. Nice, clear text, very sharp image here. And that's a nice visual representation, I would say. So let's bring in the New Heart disc. And as you can see here, very dark, very subdued. Colors are washed out, unfocused images, the text, well, it's not as sharp as you would like. It looks rather unfocused, I would say. To me, this looks like a homemade creation. The killer was when I placed both of these discs in my computer and I checked the actual amount of data on each disc. For Newhart, that was somewhere around four and a half gigabytes. For Barney Miller, it was over seven and a half gigabytes. The quality of the picture for both TV series was near enough the same. Both are basically unmastered, shoveled onto a disc affairs. And I really doubt that the one extra Barney Miller episode amounted to three extra gigabytes of data. Bottom line, this tells me the new Heart box set is a fake. The Barney Miller box set is the real McCoy. Now, I had another set ready as a present. This time it was the TV Cop Show, another 80s outing. I wonder how many of you remember Hill Street Blues. This one was rather more coherent as a presentation box. That is, there were individually boxed volumes secured in a rather nice outer case. But you know what? <laughs> Same thing. 
same issues, just a better presented faith. And let me quickly interject a few visuals of the Hill Street Blues box set, which as you can see here, actually looks quite respectable. The box set looks very nice indeed. The individual DVD boxes look very nice. There's even a booklet, which again, looks very nice. Someone has gone to quite a lot of trouble here, but this is a fake. And as my friend Heath Holland says, the majority of these fakes are baked, as it were, recorded onto single layer DVDs. Basically, the capacity of a single layer DVD is the same as a computer based blank. So, what is this? 4.7 gigabytes, is it? So, that's what these discs offer you. And that's why the picture quality is substandard. Most commercial discs, according to Heath, and I've done extra research on the internet, which backs him up. Most commercial discs, 99% of them, well, they are dual layer. And so you're looking at a capacity up to eight and a half gigabytes, which gives you an awful lot more space to pack in extra image quality. That's what you expect when you pay your money. You do not expect single layer resolution. What you get is blocking, you get artifacts, you get screen tearing. That's what you tend to get when you squeeze a dual layer image onto a single layer disc. You get substandard imagery. So I then looked at my own set. This was a rather large multi-volume set based on the vintage legal drama, the US TV show, Perry Mason, starring the legendary Raymond Burr. Now, in terms of presentation, it's, well, fairly elaborate, I think it's safe to say, with strong plastic boxes and an outer card slipcase. The discs themselves were beautifully presented in a grey and silver embossing pattern, while you could even read the name Perry Mason around the spindle hole, the area where you would normally see the matrix numbers. So I felt well, rather more confident this time around. So I popped a few discs into my DVD player. And would you believe it? Blocky artifacts all over the screen. Screen breakup. Lots and lots of errors all over the place. So I contacted my chum, Heath Holland, as I checked the data on my discs. Now, on my discs, typically I saw figures like 4.68 gigabytes. Trouble is, on Heath's copy, and he has an actual real copy, his data totals on his disks were around 6.4 gigabytes. So, another fake. I had a hat trick. But goodness gracious, you wouldn't think so to see it. Now, I was thoroughly paranoid by this time, so I started checking lots of other sets in my collection. Bought a while back, yes, from places like Amazon, plus more specialist online retailers. So, for example, I tried The Saint. Do you remember the old Roger Moore TV series? And I was happy to see typical disk capacities of 7.47 gigabytes. There was another one, a Steve Forrest TV series called The Baron, where Forrest plays a sort of playboy action hero back in the, back in the 60s. I think this TV series was actually out and about. Again, I was seeing totals of 7.46 gigabytes, and on they went. Thank goodness. It seemed that my recent eBay purchases were the source of my heartache here. So I flew into action and I got on the case. The three box sets derived from, as I say, two eBay sources. One source was very quick to provide a full refund. The second source has thus far been rather quiet. Now, I'm going to give this guy time to respond. Then if I hear nothing, I'm going to talk to eBay Direct, and I'm going to ask for action on this matter. So, after all that, how can you avoid issues like this during the run-up to Christmas? Well, here is a few tips.
Number one, if you can, buy direct from the label itself if they have their own online shop. If that's impossible, and sometimes it is for many US-based boutique labels because often the US-based guys, they only post within the USA, then try and buy from a respected third-party retailer in the UK. Avoid buying from individuals. If you are tempted to buy from an individual for whatever reason, then you need to do your research. Research your chosen source. Also, how many of your chosen box sets has this guy sold thus far? I noted one particular chap, and he had sold over 90 copies of my Perry Mason box set. He wasn't selling anything else either just the Perry Mason box set. So, either this guy was putting an immense amount of trust and money into future sales, especially when the real McCoy costs around somewhere around £100 each wholesale, or this guy was selling fakes. And this chap was also selling his box sets for well under wholesale price. If and when you buy any DVDs, check the outer art and the disc art within. Do the colours look less than sharp? Are the colours muted? The text may be a little fuzzy. That could be a sign of a fake. Or pop the discs into a computer and check the file sizes. If the file size totals around 4 gigabytes plus, then it's highly likely you have a fake. Five. Play the disc and view the content. Yes, some TV content can look a little soft and may lack definition. However, even so, there shouldn't be any blocky artifacts or screen breakup. That goes too far. If you see those effects, you may have a fake on your hands. Six, there's no time like the present, folks. If you bought a DVD weeks or even months ago from eBay and now harbor suspicions, then check. And if you do have a fake on your hands, despite any stated return stipulations, kick up a fuss with your original supplier and eBay. Now, maybe I'm way out of line on legal terms, but in my book, any returns policy should only be applied to lawful transactions. If you have a fake on your hands, then you've been a victim of a criminal act. Sure, it's a low-level criminal act, but criminal nevertheless. You shouldn't have to suffer the consequences. At the very least, eBay should be made aware of what's going on under their very noses. And that's it, folks. Thanks for watching this one-off. And apologies for the off-topic focus, but I wanted to warn people out there, the Christmas run-up is a perfect time for scammers. And well, I should know, hey. Before you go, please, if you can, if you can click on the like and subscribe buttons just below here. Further down in the description, there are chapter headings to navigate around this video. And there are links to my Patreon page, my Facebook group page, and my website. And if you can support me via Patreon, 
be a big help because it actually helps to keep this channel going. Anyway, I'll be back on Monday with, well, I'll tell you now. It's a buyer's guide and it covers turntables and money is a big theme on that one. Anyway, I'd like to have your company then. Be nice to have comments on that particular video and this one too. If you've been scammed, if you've received fakes, please let me know. Please let me know what happened. Did you get your money back or not? Be nice if you can explain the circumstances. Any information would be a big help, I'm sure, to other people reading your comments. So any comments down below, very welcome indeed. So I hope to have your company on Monday and until that time, folks, bye-bye for now.